G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are doing another ranking series ahead of the 2024 season and today we are going to be doing Ruckman or specifically Ruck Duo. So not quality of Ruckman in their individual right, how they work as a combination. There is some nuance to this. There are some clubs that just straight up don't roll with a second Ruckman. So they're still included, they'll just be compared against how teams go with two Ruckman. So in this video I'm going to rank them from 18th to the best ruck combination in the league. And some ruck combinations work differently, you know. At, at Carlton, you know, between Pitney and Tom DeConey, they probably do share a lot more uh, ruck duties than, say, a Rowan Marshall who gets a chop out from a Cheeto Owens. All of those will have to be factored in. And Oscar McInerney gets a little bit of a chop out from Joe Danaher. So Joe Danaher, we probably include as the second ruck, but we don't include the 60-odd goals he kicks in a year as being part of the ruck combination as such. I hope that makes sense. But in some cases, it will be relevant if a second ruck is contributing in the ruck legitimately and also hitting the scoreboard up forward. Again, this is going to get complicated, but I've got justification for all of them. So let's crack into it and talk about the 18th ranked ruck combination in the league. I think that is going to be North Melbourne. And I'm so sorry, North Melbourne fans. I don't feel good about coming at your team all the time. But let's be honest, Tristan Cherry and Callum Coleman-Jones is going to be the likely ruck combination now that Goldstein's gone. And it's young. It's not bad. I mean, I don't really have too much of an opinion on Common Jones as a ruckman. We haven't seen a lot of it. He's good for about seven to 10 hit outs a game. And Tristan Cherry did look good in the first part of last year. And I know that he got injured. So he's only 25, only played 33 games. But as far as a ruck duo combination goes, I can't possibly put any other team here. The second weakest combination might be Geelong, okay? And that is Reece Stanley and Toby Conway, which, who I believe, based on the last game of last year, might be the combination they roll with. Reece Stanley statistically is a better ruckman than I realized. 28 hit outs a game and two and a half clearances, 12 touches. And we've seen one game from Toby Conway and he could be good. And to get uh, 24 hit outs in his only game as a 20 year old is outstanding, to be honest. That being said, obviously we're waiting on how good they are right now and you can't wait too heavily into one game. So it could be decent this year, but it's not a very good ruck combination. Then we got Collingwood. Again, little controversial, best team in the competition, has the third worst ruck combination in my opinion. We've got Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox. Now, these guys do probably share a little bit more of the load, at least looking at hitouts. Cameron gets about 25 hitouts a game, three clearances. Mason Cox gets 17 hitouts and a goal a game. That's actually pretty good going for a second ruck, but overall, the overall ability of that duo isn't super formidable. Then I've got the Hawks here with Ned Reeves and Marby or Chole. Now, this one actually was tricky to pick what is the combination because at times we saw Reeves and Lloyd Meek play together. But in my opinion, with Marby or Chole into this side, presumably going to play round one, do they go with two Ruckman and have one less runner when you've also got Marby or Chole? I'd imagine Meek probably just sits behind Reeves. But Hawks fans, let me know. Excuse my ignorance. Either way, I don't think it really changes the ranking. So Reeves does get some hit outs. He gets uh, 28 hit outs a game, two and a half clearances, but just the eight touches. So he doesn't really impact much outside of being a tap Ruckman. Lloyd Meek gets about 18 hit outs a game, again, playing second Ruck. So it's a little bit messy there. Chole in the past, if we're assessing this as Marby or Chole, he hasn't really rucked seriously since about 2021 and he got about 12 hit outs a game. So if he's deployed as a genuine second ruck this year, it helps, but I still think Hawthorne have a bottom four ruck combination. Next, I'm going to go with Port Adelaide with Ivan Soldo and Charlie Dixon, like sort of as the second ruck. I'll name him anyway, even though he's predominantly a forward. Now, this seems harsh because Ivan Soldo has had a pretty good career, like he's a premiership player. But it'll make more sense as I get through the rankings because some of these ruck combos are better than I'd realized when I properly analyzed it. But Ivan Zoldo played nine games last year for 23 hitouts, admittedly as second ruck. And while I will give him credit, when there was occasions where um, Nankervis was out of the team, there was a game where he had 41 hitouts last year. So a little bit of like conjecture here, like is he going to be a good number one ruck? I could see him bouncing up the rankings here but I couldn't put him ahead of some of the other teams ahead. And, and Charlie Dixon just gets about seven hit outs a game. He could fall out of the best 22. So I'm not sure what that looks like outside of that. And I'd imagine Jordan Sweet probably isn't best 22 round one. Hello everyone. So I apologize. I'm doing this thing where I'm editing the video late at night and in my rush to do this video, I missed out on Carlton. So I'm going to violently inject them into the video right now. And uh, I've got them just ahead of Port Adelaide. Carlton have Pitney and De Koning, and they're a decent one-two punch. Like, you get 25 hitouts a game and about 10 touches a game from Pitney, and De Koning get, backs him up pretty well with 17. But neither of them are necessarily outstanding rucks, which is why I don't have them higher. And you'd imagine De Koning is only going to get better. Well, they probably both will just get better, but I have them behind some of these other combinations, but ahead of Port Adelaide. Then I've gone with Essendon here, um, with Todd Goldstein and Sam Draper. 
this is where it gets a little tight. You could easily have the next team I have below them. But Todd Goldstein, uh, he's, God, must be about 36 now. 13 touches a game, 29 hit outs, hit outs and 3.6 clearances. So his clearances are a little bit higher than uh, anyone I've mentioned pretty much so far. And then there's Sam Draper, who I'd imagine this is the combo they go with and Draper plays a little bit forward. He averages about 11 touches, 20 hit outs, three clearances, and does kick about 0.7 goals a game. So he got 10 goals from 14 games. And he's only 25, but a little bit less accomplished than let's say the West Coast Ruckman. Now, West Coast, I thought, was going to feature way lower in this. And in fairness, we haven't seen these guys actually play in the same team yet. Matthew Flynn and Bailey Williams. So on performance, these guys are actually better than I realized. Flynn played nine games last year and then got forced out by a rampaging Kieran Briggs, who has you know become a very good Ruckman, in my opinion. But he averaged about 28 hitouts a game, 3.7 clearances, 12 touches. So it's comparable with all of the Rucks pretty much that I've mentioned so far on output. And he's supported by a guy in Bailey Williams, who I would describe as going from a D-grade Ruckman last year as a 23-year-old to probably a B grader because he gets about 13 touches, 27 and a half hit outs, and he's good for four clearances a game. So on output and as a strength of combination, I do think that is higher than all the other teams I've mentioned so far. In reality though, if Flynn's gonna be out for three months, Bailey Williams and whoever the hell we're gonna play as a second ruck, that is absolutely gonna be a weakness. But we'll move on now to Sydney. Again, a tough one to assess. Brody Grundy is pretty much going to be a number one ruck or maybe a sole ruck, but they will get a chop out from Hayden McLean as well. Grundy averaged about 20 and a half hit outs a game last year, which I know is simplistic analysis, and he was second ruck there. But it is his last year at the Pies where he was the main ruck. He averaged about 30 and 16 touches. So to what extent can we extrapolate where he was at Collingwood and, and assume he's gonna do that again this year? If that's his baseline, he's still gonna be a pretty decent ruckman. And on top of that, McLean bobbed up for about 10 hit outs a game. Now, I don't know if that number is gonna get less because they didn't have a Brody Grundy last year. They genuinely had a ruck problem last year and McLean did a bit more rucking. Does he do less? I'm not too sure, but either way, I think Brody Grundy is a rock solid number one ruck option, even if he's not elite anymore. Then we've got the Giants with Kieran Briggs and Lockie Keefe, who probably just qualifies as their second ruck rather than a chop out ruck, because he gets about seven hit outs a game. Again, I'm not too sure what the forecast going forward, but Kieran Briggs has actually come on and become a very good young ruck of the competition. Ranked 11th overall for stoppage clearances last year, and nine of those players were all midfielders. The only other ruck ahead of him was Oscar McInerney. So he gets about 15 0.4 touches a game, which is just about more so than pretty much everyone else I've mentioned. 26 hit outs himself, but the 6.5 clearances is when the ball hits the ground. He's also quite a big factor as well. So Kieran Briggs is on an upward trajectory, and I think he's a very good player. Then I've gone with Richmond's ruck combination, and I've gone for Nan Curvis and Samson Ryan. Now I know they've recruited Sam Naismith. My understanding is Naismith's probably going to play if Nan Curvis is not fit, but they won't play together. Richmond fans, let me know in the comments, but I think Samson Ryan as a genuine forward ruck is probably the combination I'd favor. So Nankervis himself is still a very good ruckman, 32 and a half hit outs. That's significantly more than anyone I've named so far. 16 and a half disposals. Again, that's probably the highest disposal average. So he gets his hands on the footy. It implies an impact around the ground and four clearances at game as well is very solid. He is also supported by Samson Ryan, who is a young gun of the comp. Again, upward trajectory, 12 hit outs a game last year and the goal a game. So that's a very well-rounded mix. And their number one ruck, the main guy, Nankervis, is rock solid. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions. And I'll just say Oscar McInerney. Again, I, I don't know if we include the Joe Danaher chop out other than acknowledging that he does the forward rucking. But McInerney himself gets 34 hit outs, 5.6 clearances. So he's the number one at Ruckman for clearances at stoppages and about 12 and a half touches. So the thing is, it doesn't really work against teams in my analysis here if they only have one Ruckman, if that Ruckman gets the job done. In some, in some Ruck combos, you have one that's way better than the other. Sure, you have some that are more even, but I think a single Ruck solution can work. <sighs> I did it again, I'm so sorry. The other team that I forgot, because I clearly rushed this, is the Adelaide Trows. So that's the team I have next. So the number one ruck is Riley O'Brien, and he's quite a prolific tap ruckman. 38.6 puts him right up the top there with guys like Wits and Sean Darcy, even in terms of hit outs per game. So he does a great job, wins some clearances to about three a game. And he is supported by Phil Thorpe as well, who is both a ruckman and a decent forward kicking a goal a game. Now, Riley Phil Thorpe will become a gun, a legitimate gun. But again, we are assessing it on what they are right now, rather than forecasting the future. So I think this is a very good ruck combo, but there are a few ahead of it. 
Then you've got the Gold Coast Suns, who have Jared Witts and sort of Levi Casbolt. They'll probably count him. But Jared Witts himself, his output is unreal. 39 hitouts a game. That is more so than anyone else. Four and a half clearances, 14 touches. Most hitouts per game of anyone in the competition. And you get some support there from Levi Casbolt. But again, not so sure how much to read into that. He is solid, gets about five hitouts a game, but also kicks about a goal a game. Then we've got the Saints with Rowan Marshall. He gets 26.6 hitouts, five clearances a game, and just a legitimate number one ruck that doesn't really really need support. Like we do see Machido Owens amongst others. He's not the only one, but I don't think I can count a second ruck in here. Just ranking their ruck combination on the strength of Rowan Marshall is still compelling and I still have it as the third best. He gets 20 touches a game. He gets five marks. He gets five tackles. It's just a well-rounded ruckman who can win taps, but also win the ball around the ground. Perhaps controversially, I've got the Bulldogs here in third, despite the fact they've got the All-Australian ruckman in Tim English. So he gets about 31 hitouts a game, 19 disposals. And again, his strength is that he can win the ball around the ground and accumulate the footy. Win clearances, 3.3 3 per game. And he's supported by Rory Lobb, who gets about eight hitouts a game and a goal a game too. So... This could also change. Like, Rory Lobb might lose his spot to Sam Darcy this year. We don't know. And I can't really forecast how Sam Darcy's going to go, but this is their current combination. And I just don't think it's quite as good as, say, a Melbourne with Max Gorn. Now, Melbourne, again, have a single ruck solution, if you like. JVR, Van Royen, is probably the, the guy who rucks forward of center when Gorn's, like, not there. And he's done a little bit of rucking. But Gorn's kind of the main man. And I just think Max Gorn as a player, as an individual, is so good and clearly the best ruckman that it doesn't matter that he doesn't have a, a second ruck anymore. I think they're better with the, him just playing as much time as he can. His output has dropped a little bit. There was times where he was getting 40 hitouts a game. That number's dropped to about 25 to 27, but still gets his four clearances. And it's around the ground, the stuff that can't be tracked by stats, the way he sets up behind the footy, taking marks. I still think Melbourne's is probably the second best. And that leads me to the best ruck combination in the league, which I didn't think was going to be the answer when I started this analysis. But I think I think it's Fremantle. Sean Darcy didn't play full season last year, but he gets 39 hitouts a game. 14 disposals, four clearances, and he's second in the league just behind Jared Witts for hitouts per game. And it's just obvious that Fremantle are a much better side with Sean Darcy in the team. And he's supported by Luke Jackson, who's kind of a key forward, kind of a midfielder, kind of a ruckman, but he gets 17 and a half hitouts a game. You can't say that he's not the second ruck. So you have a prolific tap ruckman as number one. You also have a guy who supports him with 17 hitouts a game and kicks about a goal a game. Now that number is a little bit inflated because Luke Jackson did some rucking while Sean Darcy was injured last year. It's not as though they combined for 60 hitouts a game, but there were two occasions last year where Luke Jackson went into the number one role and got over 40 hitouts in a game. So I just think Fremantle as a combination that is probably on an upward trajectory is clearly the best ruck combo in the league. But let me know in the comments, guys, what are your thoughts? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? After this, I'm probably gonna do AFL spines, but let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.